Oh dear, what's this? Another Vivek City of Raw? Uh, didn't we just showcase one of these? Oh uh, uh, well, oh well. Uh, what's one more for the pile? Uh, after all, Vivek is a city of divinities. And divinities deserve diversity. And uh, that brings me to today's more of the day, which uh, today is Vivek, God the City, by Tapitan Thors. Uh, now, there's a reason why so many Mons have attempted to overhaul the city of Vivek, uh, particularly in recent years, with Mons like Vivek City by the Inwars and Mushrooms team, uh, Rethinking Vivek by Atrionis, and uh, Beautiful Cities of Morrowind by Random Powell. Outside of Bomora, no other city in the vanilla game has received anywhere near as much attention as Vivek. And uh, that's because the city, despite being the largest one on Vardenfell, at least in the vanilla game, has just never truly felt like a city. I mean, a, a series of isolated cantons, just disjointedly connected together with few residential areas, and largely just shops, taverns, and services, uh, strewn about in a maze-like fashion with no sense towards urban planning? Uh, Vivek just completely defies any definition of practical city design. It, it doesn't feel like a city. It feels like a theme park. But uh, for all those flaws, though, th there's no denying it's a pretty neat-looking city, you know, at least on the surface. Uh, which is why so many mods have attempted to fix it and improve just, you know, both the aesthetic look and the practical function of this city of a god. Uh, but none have gone uh, quite so far as today's more of the day, for Evervec, God the City, is just simply a massive city overhaul and expansion for this uh, City of the Divine. Overhauling not just the city's exteriors, but also the city's interiors. Uh, doubling the size of the interiors for the various cantons, and uh, adding in dozens of new interior cells with new shops, residences, taverns, and religious places of worship. Uh, this is easily just the largest city of Rahomon to be released uh, for Vivek to date, and one of the largest attempted outside of uh, maybe London Rook's doomed City of Vivek expansion, uh, which was a kind of a planned outgrowth for dramatic Vivek, but uh, which was never actually released. So, to my knowledge, uh, this is uh, pretty much the largest Vivek City overall to be released uh, for Morrowind to date. But uh, before we go checking out all the new additions on, you know, the interior side of things, uh, we're going to focus just a bit on the exterior. And uh, right away, you can see just a, a lot of familiar additions made to the city. For Vivek, uh, God the City is, in truth, uh, something of a compilation including elements from uh, Rethinking Vivek by Atrionis, uh, Dramatic Vivek by London Rook, Vivek Four and Quarter Bridge by Wolf Shaman, Vivek Wastewick's Expansion by Autumn, Library Vivek Enhanced by Duodena Miko, and just uh, several other mods. Now, uh, some of the changes made to the city here include the, uh, well, obviously, the, the city's ports in front of the St. Delm and St. Orm's Cantons, uh, originally from Rethinking Vivek, uh, this finally gives the city some actual, you know, cargo docks where deep water vessels can dock and unload goods, including immersive additions like uh, cargo cranes and uh, warehouses where, you know, those goods can be stored. Another new addition here is a set of actual proper, uh, you know, docking platforms for gondoliers. Uh, no longer do each of the cantons have those flimsy wooden docks that, you know, kind of just look like temporary additions affixed to the uh, side of each canton. Uh, now they have proper docking platforms where gondoliers can launch and arrive at. And uh, one other new addition here includes uh, some more bridges to just uh, connect, you know, better connect the city together including, most importantly, uh, the second level of the Foreign Quarter Canton, uh, which is now directly connected to the rest of the city. Uh, there's also a number of new, uh, opened-up Canton Plazas. Uh, not every Canton Plaza has been opened up, though, just, uh, you know, the ones for the Halalu, uh, Talbani, Redarin, and the Foreign Quarter Cantons. Uh, while the St. Alms, St. Delon, and the Arena uh, still have their domes. Uh, you'll also note that the cantons have just a, a lot more decorations now, with occasional graffiti and clutter, potted plants and gardens, dangling street lights and lighted pathways, and street vendors, and, and little shops for you to visit. 
Uh, so the walkways of Avec are just uh, filled with life, and, you know, aren't quite as empty and barren as they were in the vanilla game. Uh, though, uh, for those of you concerned about the FPS hit from just adding so much clutter to the exteriors of Avec, uh, keep in mind that uh, the decorations, exterior lighting, and uh, street vendors are all just, you know, separate add-ons. Uh, so, if you're playing on a lower-end machine, uh, you can just simply choose to forego those three additions for just a better frame rate experience. But uh, anyway, just uh, taking a moment here, uh, this is uh, simply a, a stunning looking overhaul for the city of Vivec. It is simply gorgeous and a massive visual improvement over the vanilla game. It just, it certainly helps to bring a little more just life to this capital city of Ardenfell. And it's also compatible with just a number of other, you know, Vivec improvement mods, like a Concept Art Palace by Vegetto, and Bar Dao, a Ministry of Truth by the Inwa's Mushroom Team. Uh, you may have noticed I'm using both of these mods just in the background, and uh, combined, they make for just a, a, a truly transformative experience when visiting Vivec. And uh, with these mods installed, just every visit to Vivec will simply uh, fill you with awe. Uh, whether it's your first time visiting the City of a God, or your hundredth. Uh, but of course, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the exterior overhaul and improvements are just really only the tip of the iceberg of what Vivec God the City does. For the real meat of this overhaul lies in the just the hundreds of interiors that compose this massive city. Almost every interior in Vivec has been overhauled or just uh, completely rebuilt with this overhaul. From the High Fane itself, which uh, just FYI uh, integrates the mod Alter the High Fane by Fire Outmage, uh, to the various Canton Wastewicks and Canal Works, to uh, just numerous shops and taverns like the Flowers of Gold or the Black Shark Corner Club. And uh, what's especially impressive about these just these redesigned and rebuilt interiors is their sheer scale. These are monumentally massive interiors, more befitting a city dedicated to a god than, you know, the cramped corridors and uh, hallways of an old Morrowind. With just tons and tons of verticality built into just nearly every space. There's a lot of just simply beautiful designs here, like the, uh, like the Temple of Avec with its massive central halls where pilgrims can come to worship and uh, where priests can hold sway over uh, just large audiences. Uh, this feels like the sort of grand temple complex that, you know, you'd expect to find in a major city like Vivec, you know, let alone one with a living god. And uh, while we're in the temple complex, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, this does incorporate and include uh, the mod Library of Vivec Enhanced by Duo Dinamico with just a, a, a few minor adjustments, uh, as you can see here. And of course, uh, as I mentioned in our original showcase uh, for that mod, it is just a, a rather lovely and atmospheric redesign of the Library of Avec, uh, giving it just, you know, a tad more verticality, with a lot more study nooks and shelves and, you know, a general atmosphere. And it makes for just a, a great addition here with uh, Avec God the City. But uh, jumping over to the uh, rest of Avec, uh, arguably some of the biggest changes here are actually with the Canton Wastewicks, uh, which have been just uh, massively, massively expanded to uh, just an incredible scale. And uh, now each Canton has both a lower and upper Wastewicks with these, these simply massive open-air plaza-like interiors, including an absolutely glorious use of verticality, especially in the central part of each Canton allowing you to look both up and down at the lower and upper levels. Uh, this is actually just a, a bit of an illusion to, you know, give you the feeling like the, you know, the inside of the canton is just all one big interior. Uh, but in reality, it's actually just, you know, divided off into a, a multitude of interiors. Uh, you know, obviously just to prevent the frame rate from uh, completely tanking. But either way, the, the effect here is it's simply just really utterly immersive. The, the ability to just look down into the canal wicks or up into the upper waste wicks is just a, just a really impressive feat. 
Uh, compared to the Vanilla game, it is, it is just, it is truly incredible just how much more space uh, there is with uh, the fact God the city when exploring and checking out these wastework interiors. And each one is both unique and just utterly massive. Every canton in Vivec is just it has been covered with these new expanded wastework interiors, with some hosting gardens, training pits, uh, conference halls, public walkways, in some cases even stables for cards, various vendors and merchants, little taverns and uh, pop-up displays for goods. Uh, the scale here is just utterly epic and exquisite. Uh, you truly feel like you're just exploring an actual city when you're running through these cantons. Uh, the amount of work that Tappet and Claus must have put into this is just, it, it boggles the mind. But you know, it, it comes together just beautifully. The, the, the result here is just utterly amazing. And, and of course, with uh, so much more space, uh, you'll also find just a, a number of new adjoining interiors, including new shops, taverns, residences, shrines, temples, and uh, pretty much just everything else that you can imagine. And a lot of these new interiors are actually from the Wastewix expansion mod by Autumn, uh, that's, you know, just been merged in here with some tweaks by Captain Claus. And uh, this is just another component that really just helps to, you know, fill out the city a bit with just tons of new locations for you to discover. But uh, aside from new locations, a lot of the game's vanilla interiors have also been overhauled, like, you know, the Black Shot Corner Club. Uh, which has been expanded and uh, given just a, a bit more verticality. And uh, yes, uh, verticality is just, you know, is a bit of a recurring theme here. For any interior that could be made into a multi-level interior has been. Another great example of this is the Flowers of Gold Tavern in the Rettering Captain, uh, which has an open-air bar just overlooking a lower-level seating area with pots of flowers just, you know, dangling in the space between. A, a really just rather neat looking design, and one that uses, a, again, some verticality. Of course, uh, other small interiors have also been overhauled, uh, often with bits of clutter from uh, Obe data or Tamriel data, or the new Doctor data asset collection that just uh, includes items from London Rook's a Dramatic Morrowind asset library. Uh, these overhauled interiors even extend to the, you know, the various little dungeons in Vivek like the Ancestral Tomb in the Foreign Quarter Captain, or the Talvani Monster Lab. And, you know, this brings me to just another element of Vivek called the City, which is the expanded canal works beneath each canton. Like everything else, these interiors have just been massively expanded with some open-air spaces, uh, but they also incorporate content from the Underworks, you know, the sewer system that used to exist beneath the City of Vivek. Uh, I, I say used to exist uh, because uh, this mod actually just, uh, you know, axes the entire underworks system and simply replaces them with a larger canalworks system. And uh, this is uh, perhaps just one of the mod's weaker points because uh, this will create just a, a lot of unnecessary mod conflicts, uh, particularly with quest mods, a, a lot of which, uh, you know, just add content or scenes in Vivek's underworks unlike the Strider's Nest, or uh, even more mysterious killings. And uh, while I'm just a mod showcaser and, you know, not a mod reviewer, uh, my job is to show you the mods and let you form your own opinions, not rate them. I, I, I do have to point out that the canal works and some of their connected interiors are, you know, some of the more decidedly uh, incomplete looking interiors that you'll find in uh, Vivek God the City. Uh, they tend to lack detail and proper lighting, and uh, mostly seem like, you know, large interiors for the sake of being large. And a lot of them are connected to these uh, fairly big storage interiors that have literally nothing or next to nothing in them. Uh, just a, a maze of corridors and hallways with no furnishings, no lighting, and no clutter. Uh, th this is just, you know, a, a fairly massive mod though, so, you know, it's not like a few incomplete interiors or, you know, a big deal. I I'm just, I'm pointing them out, so uh, you won't be surprised when you run into them. And uh, this mod will likely get more updates in the future, so it it's not like those incomplete areas will uh, necessarily uh, stay that way. 
But uh, anyway, you know, those minor criticisms aside, uh, this is just, this is a truly epic overhaul for the city of Vivek. Uh, the largest that's really ever been released, and uh, with more than enough exciting new awe-inspiring additions to uh, just make this a, a divinely ordained city feel like a true city of the gods. There's just so much we're skipping here, uh, this is really only just a very, very brief look at everything in this massive mod. But, you know, well, we, we can't show it all, so that's just, uh, that's just our mod of the day. Uh, as always, uh, I've been your host, Dark Elf Guy. Uh, thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy, happy modding, and I'll just, I'll uh, see you all next time.